This is episode 15 of the History of Podcast. I'm Robert. And I'm Emma. And today is World Beard Day. To celebrate today's episode, we'll discuss the history of beards. Now, before we dive in, like always, um, got to tell you about the YouTube channel. It's uh, also called The History Of, and we do have an Instagram, and it's called The History Of Podcast, and you should totally check it out and give it a like. Oh, yeah. Um, as always, before we get into the episode, we have the egg carton count, and today's egg carton count is... It's, uh, it's 21, Woo-hoo! so we're up two from last time, and those are both 18s, so uh, I bet you can really really hear the difference that's making in the audio it's just it's insane oh yeah treated room difference we're getting that protein oh yeah Alrighty, so diving right in you know cave paintings have been found of people without beards you know this suggests that ancient people plucked their facial hair with shells flint and shark teeth okay just explain to me for a moment how you can pluck your facial hair with shark teeth like do you just cut it off or like or do you use the shark teeth to cut I suppose. I don't know. I'm not even going to ask. I assume these are theories. Maybe there's some evidence, but Why it was a long time ago. Why do you need to ago. shave? Like, there's, like, I don't know. It's the aesthetic man. I'm not even going to ask. However, the beard could be used to keep the wearer warm, as well as soften any blows taken from fistfights. Additionally, having a beard made for a more dominating look. Well, uh... Other than, you know, the ancient primitive times, uh, beards did exist in ancient Egypt. By 3000 BC, both Egypt and India, we'll talk about India in a moment, but both uh, Egypt and India began making razors from copper, um, and the ancient Egyptians, they hated body hair. Like, they were kind of obsessed with shaving. They they shaved their heads and bodies, so, like, they were totally bald. Um, interestingly, some some Egyptians wore wigs to protect their scalps from sunburn, like why not why not just hats like you could make reed hats or something i know just be the, an extra i guess the the japanese rice farmers are officially higher iq than the the ancient egyptians Ooh, i don't know about point. that oh <laughs> um and uh the king and queen uh of or the pharaoh and pharaoh west probably not pharaoh west pharaoh and his and the queen would wear uh, fake beards for special occasions um, to represent their high place in society, uh, symbolizing that they were quote unquote gods, uh, and these beards were were metal and uh, tied onto their head. Yeah. Also, just an aside, I think the whole wanting to like get rid of like the body hair and like the head hair was like a cleanliness, like lice thing. So. Yet, yet they still wore fake, like they still wore wigs. I, I don't know. Which makes no sense. You know, we can just go back and ask them. Yeah, I know. Now, Israel also had um, their own thing with beards. So, men kept the corner of their beards unshaven in accordance with Leviticus 19.27, which says, Do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip off the edges of your beard. Leviticus 19.27 NIV. That's a strange commandment, but I'm not going to question it. Um, In Mesopotamia, uh, beards and beards and... Uh, ancient Mesopotamia, were worn to display both the wearer's masculinity and strength. Um, and having a beard in this culture was also, you know, kind of an aesthetic touch. Um, they were the first to use beard oil, which I, I wonder what exactly, what kind of oil they used. Not sure about that one. Um, but they used a curling iron to shape their beards into tight curls. Quite a fashion statement. Mm-hmm. Um, and some civilizations even dyed their beards. Uh, the Persians dyed them uh, red, orange, and the Assyrians dyed them black. So ancient India, of course, also also had beards, and their beards represented wisdom and dignity. Ancient Greece also had beards, you know, with a meaning. So their beards represented honor. Like those in Mesopotamia, Greeks would also curl their beards. I think there's like there's a, you know, the famous. Um, sculpture of socrates's socrates head maybe it's like you can look it up you'll recognize it Mm. just about everyone's seen it it's the he has like the curled beard oh yeah very it's an iconic look we can put a link to that in the show notes yeah now in ancient greece as a punishment one's beard would be shaved off and it's kind of like a shaming thing that was also didn't that also exist in ancient israel like that was a 
I believe it mentions in some places of the Old Testament that like if your beard was cut off, you were it was kind Ooh. of like a sign. It was a you were like banished if you're not banished, but like it was it was humiliating to have your beard cut off. And I think it was like a, the length of your beard was a sign of wisdom. Yeah, I think that seemed like a multicultural thing, like sign of wisdom. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah. Um, well, going to Scandinavia all over the world here. There's also evidence, um, you know, shaving existed in Scandinavia, which, I mean, we mentioned earlier, like, that you need, that the beard will help keep you warm. Scandinavia is a pretty cold place. Like, mm-hmm. why do they need to shave? They they need those beards. Just gotta keep them looking fine. But, um, they had, uh, bronze razors, uh, with handles shaped like the heads of a horse. Um, those were found to date back to, uh, between 1500 to 1200 B.C. Now, Alexander the Great came to power, and the popularity of beards changed when he did. Um, He wanted all his soldiers to be clean-shaven for fear that beards would be used against them as the enemy could grab it during fighting. Like, if you're you're worried about the enemy grabbing your beard, you're already in, like, too close of contact. Like, if... If the enemy is able to grab your beard, you've already made a mistake. Gotta think one step ahead, man. I mean, Alexander the Great's called the Great for a reason. I guess. I, I don't know. I don't know much about uh, close close fighting. But um, in Rome, a uh, well-maintained beard was the style. Rome's fifth king, uh, Lucius Tarquinius. Tarquinius? Um, and priest, Luca, Lucius Tarquinius Priestus. Uh, promoted shaving to be more hygienic uh, during his rule from 616 to 578 BC. It's kind of confusing with those numbers because it's BC it goes backwards. Um, but about one 100 years later, some barbers uh, moved from Sicily and opened shops in Rome. And these these barber shops, these are the first barber shops. They they help fuel uh, an era of shaving. And uh, around 300 BC, which is like we're jumping through time, but think about it. This is hundreds of years really uh the romans actually had the the first shave parties and either went to the barber shop uh or had a slave uh help with the uh momentous occasion and these parties were a coming of age of uh, celebration for young men like the i guess the moment that you were a boy to man was that the the first shave party mm-hmm. hmm. and uh Emperor Hadrian, when Emperor Hadrian grew out his beard uh, to mask his scars, uh, many Roman men followed suit. So, the I guess the 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 king or dictator really sets the tone on beards. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a celebrity, and people want to be like a celebrity. So yeah, yeah. Now the wearing of beards during the Middle Ages was dependent on who was ruling. So kind of like with a Hadrian. Yeah. If the king was rocking a beard, so would his subjects. If he was clean-shaven, the subjects would follow his lead. Hmm. Now, it was also commonplace for Catholic priests to have facial hair in the 1500s. So, I know we jumped a lot, but 1500 AD. With the beginning of the Protestant church, many Protestants grew beards as a sign of separation from Catholicism. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, you know, and uh, <clears throat> only five, uh, so jumping to America, only five of uh, America's 45 presidents boasted a full-fledged beard while in office. Um, those were Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses S. Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, uh, James A. Garfield, and Benjamin Harrison. And, you know, it's kind of a an unwritten rule that politicians can't have beards now. It's kind of a... So I think that's why it's not really going to be coming back because I don't know. I don't know why that exists, that just politicians can't have beards. But, yeah, unwritten rule. Um, other presidents did rock facial hair, um, but maybe not, not during their presidency, like, uh, John Quincy Adams. Wait, didn't he just have scruffs or was it? It was was like a little bit of stuff on the side. It was, he had, he had whiskers. So I don't know if you're going to count that, but other presidents who did have facial hair, um, uh, were Martin Van Buren, Chester A. Arthur, Grover Cleveland, Theodore Roosevelt, and William Howard Taft. Most of you have probably heard the story of why Lincoln got his beard, but let's go over it quickly for those who haven't. Might or might not be common knowledge. I don't know. There there are little tidbits in here. Lincoln was beardless for most of his life because he wanted to look dignified in a rural area where most men were bearded. When Lincoln was running for president in 1860, 
he received a letter from Gray Spadell advising that he grow a beard to gain votes. The 11-year-old frankly wrote, I have yet got four brothers, and part of them will vote for you anyway. And if you let your whiskers grow, I will try and get the rest of them to vote for you. You would look a great deal better, for your face is so thin. All the ladies like whiskers, and they would tease their husbands to vote for you, and then you would be president. Not long after he received the letter, Lincoln grew out his legendary beard. Lincoln did get elected as the president and Potentially, it was in part of his beard. Lincoln had his train bound for his inauguration stop by Grace's town of Westfield to speak with her. You see, Lincoln told Grace, I let these whiskers grow out for you. Hmm. Interesting story. So I'm sure you've heard the, the common, the story of, uh, you know, the, the girl who wrote the pres- who wrote mm. Abraham Lincoln the letter, but, but you've never heard that excerpt. Um, getting into razors. Um, so... Here's the name for you. King Gillette. He was not a king. Um, his his first name was actually King. King C. Gillette. It's, I, I wish I had a name like that. That'd I mean, be pretty cool. Like King. I was doing the research and I said King Gillette. I was like, oh my goodness, did a king, like a French king, start this whole like razor thing? No, but no. it was his name. Uh, he was born in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin on January 5th, 1855 and raised in Chicago, Illinois. And uh, King Gillette became a, I just like saying that name, he became a, uh, a hardware traveling salesman um, after the 1871 Chicago fire, um, just to make, just so he could make ends meet. Um, and he, his boss uh, suggested that he create a disposable product to have a frequently recurring customer base, you know, have something so people can throw it away so you can just sell them more. Mm-hmm. How about that? By the age of 40, uh, when he was 40 years old, uh, Gillette got the idea for disposable ra- razor blades, and the rest is history. I'm sure you can just imagine what that company is called today. <laughs> yeah. With the dawn of gas masks in World War I, being clean-shaven was essential to survival. When the veterans came home, the clean-shaven look did not go away. In fact, it stuck around for the next 40 years. However, you know, at the end of those 40 years, beards did become a little popular in the hippie movement in the 1960s and 70s. And I will ask about the, the World War One. Was that because of the masks, the gas masks? Yeah, the gas masks. You had, you couldn't have a beard? As far I know, as I understand. Yeah. I know Hitler shaved his mustache. Like, that's why he had um, the mustache, the shape it was, was like, so he could wear, so it wouldn't be messed up by a gas mask. It's a little piece of trivia. I'm not... I'm, I'm pretty sure I heard that in our yeah, a history fair one I, I think some sailors, though, I don't know about World War One, but in general, maybe World War Two, there were some sailors who were allowed to you know, grow their masks out, or if you're in a submarine, or not grow, the, grow their beards <laughs> out. Your, sorry, the whole COVID thing. Grow your beards out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Where are we now? Oh, okay. Here we are. Uh, so uh, about electric razors. Um, so... You know, they didn't have to stick with uh, Gillette's disposable razor throughout this period as the uh, invention of the electric razor uh, came to the public with Jacob Schick. I think so, Schick? yes. Schick. Jacob Schick uh, was not the uh, first person to patent an electric razor, uh, but when he did when he did so in uh, 1928, however, he went further than any others, uh, anyone else, by releasing his electric razor to the public in 1931. Now, we're jumping over to the 1990s. Now, there was a case. uh, It's called the police versus the city of Newark. And let's just dive right in. And it involves beards. Now, um, I apologize if I butcher these names. But Farooq Abdul Aziz and Shakur Mustafa were two Sunni Muslims who were also police officers. According to their religion, they were required to grow a beard. Even though Farooq Abdul Aziz and Shakur Mustafa had been Newark police officers for 10 years, the Department of Police claimed Abdul Aziz and Mustafa both violated the no beard policy established in 1971. The two brought this case to court and won in 1999. Now, police officers are allowed to serve while having a beard if shaving it would go against their religion. Interesting piece of trivia you can share with your friends. Um, beard trends have undulated over time, uh, and being bearded and beardless both have positive and negative aspects. Thankfully, men t- uh, today have more freedom and ways to shave. 
or not to shave than ever. So, guys, remember all the great men before you who grew the, those noble accessories. And don't be afraid to rock those beards. I will mention, uh, before we go, just a quick side note about the the whole uh, coronavirus quarantine thing of guys trying to grow beards. How'd that go for you? Was it... I don't know. I'll just leave that. Maybe, uh, maybe leave a comment or something, but I'll just uh, put that out there. And uh, if you have any questions or comments about the information provided in this episode, please contact us at thehistoryof365 at gmail.com. Have a blessed day. And you've got to promise me something. Never stop learning. <laughs>